Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Back at it again with another shade of blue, a midweek episode to this week. If you have listened to both, go do us a favor and subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. Right, Dad? Tell them why they should do that. Because it helps us build a... (laughs) better audience and reach more people and get feedback that we value. See, listen to that in his voice. It's just so sincere. He just oh, wants, it was sincere. He I just, was just wants your help, people. And we're excited oh. about the season, damn it. Come on. We're excited yes. about the season. We're very excited. Two episodes this week. Yeah, go do us a favor. It takes a second. We would really appreciate it. There is an ocean of Sporting KC pods now, and we are attempting to, uh, to be your favorite ones, so... The second show of the week this week is an exciting one. It is. The and, moment everyone and why had, is that? The funny? moment everyone had been waiting <laughs> for. 29-year-old Colombian Danny Rosero. Yes. Has not quite arrived, but he is officially signed. Might be here in a couple weeks. Playing in the Colombian League. We don't know a whole lot about it, but Juan Hisne- wow, Juan Cisneros, uh, one of our newest contributors to the Blue Testament, has watched plenty of the Colombian league and he gave us a, a little bit here on Slack Robert what did uh what did Cisneros have to say about our new guy well for you Courtney Ford fans according to Juan um Danny plays similar to Courtney Ford so that's a good thing because we know Courtney has uh, quite the passion when he's out there playing um also Cody will like this very much set piece threat Cody how does that sound I, I don't believe it I genuinely <laughs> do not believe it he will come here and fall into the abyss of corner kicks that is sporting Kansas City. Well, it's because somebody actually has to get the ball into a spot where he would be. So We've had decent delivery. It just never works out. Now, we in, still? In the first game, we had two open headers that went just outside the post. So, maybe, like I said last week, maybe we're, maybe we're inching there. Yeah. Well, it was because Willie got there, right? Did we he have both of them, or was it just one? one was Roger, Roger played that one near post, and, and Fontes kind of just yeah. thought it was going in. I don't know. And he just let it go by and he kind of like put his hands to his head and he's like, oh, all right. So, okay. Yes. Uh, set piece threat for sure. He's not afraid to attack, uh, according to Juan. However, problem that can sometimes leave him out of position because he is so attack minded as the center back. So, uh, we'll have to watch for that for sure. Um, wow. He actually really does, really does watch the Colombian league. Yes. Yeah, he does. His parents subscribe to the Colombian version of ESPN plus or, oh, 
I mean, they he, they watch Colombian soccer. He he knows him better than we probably know most MLS center backs. In some ways, apparently he is a twin of Graham Zuzzi. He likes to deliver long balls over the top, so we're going to see a lot of that from the right side. Did he uh, say twin? Or are you no, just ad-libbing? I, I am ad-libbing. Okay. Come on, man. <laughs> this is... <laughs> And also uh, pretty fast, apparently. So, uh, you know, I like the athleticism that Juan is referring to. I'm, I'm hoping that all Juan comes with is true. If not, I'm blaming Juan. So there we go. There we go. I asked Peter at the presser today, do, uh, who would he most resemble? Because being that I had never seen him play. And he said he was kind of a combination of Ike and Colin. And that he oh, wow. liked to okay. he was really good 1v1 defender. Both of them were. He said uh, Rosario was... Rosero oh. was uh, better um, on the ball than probably either one of those guys, like, you know, better ball handling. So that bodes well. There you go. Of course, we got to see it to believe it. 6'2", 190. Good size. I, it sounds like he's set up to be an aerial threat, and I, I believe Juan, but again, there's just something in the air. I will. I will be happy if he's an aerial defensive threat. Yeah. If he's not an attacking threat, I'm. I'm oh, that's fine. But I, I just want a, a defensive aerial threat where balls come in, they get headed out, not dropped to the guy behind him. That's always on the other team. And the comparison to Courtney Ford is good, as that was the original plan. So maybe they will line up well. Maybe the pairing will work out. We will have to see if he has holy socks, though. Hmm. I doubt is I doubt he rocks the same socks. And I'm interested to see what hairstyle he has too, because according to what we see here, he's got a couple of different hairstyles in the uh, what sporting put out. So we'll see. That's probably our most poignant moment here is talking about somebody's hairstyle, <laughs> especially for you and me. Exactly. <laughs> especially me, actually, more than you. We got no hair and Einstein hair. <laughs> I'm working on it. It's so a, it's a look. So there was a. Foot mob made the mistake. I don't know how it happened. They pull, I used to work for them. They pull automatic data. I don't know who left out a decimal or something, but they said that the fee was $12 million and that caused a bit of a stir quickly on, on Twitter. But it looks like at least Colombian sources are reporting. It is a fee of about 1.2 million, which be. that feels about right. Yeah. Cause it, I, I have no clue how much they actually paid for him, but I do know that they, the deal was dead at one point and they uh, sent Brian bliss down and he was able to close the deal. So I don't know if that, you know, threw in an extra couple hundred thousand for him, but his team down there did not want to lose him. He was their best defender. They mm-hmm. just started the season. They're not a great team to begin with. So squeeze an extra. That's where the point two came from. That's probably where <laughs> the point two came from. Got another 20% out of bliss for the trip down there. Well, he looks formidable. I like I like his look. I I judge a lot of my opinion. That's how I used to do it in in the game. Like while I was playing, you look across the field. Ah, these guys don't have it. This guys this guy's got the look. We all did that when we were yeah. kids, didn't we? Yeah, that was the best part of it. You knew you knew before the game if you were going to win or not. <laughs> and do we really want to leave Cody out to dry in the Danny Flores? I was going to come back to it, but do you want to do you want to enlighten him who Danny Flores is? He is a sporting Kansas City player. Yeah, he's 20 years old. Recently signed midfielder. So you weren't yeah. that far off, Cody. Been compared to some guy named Gia Lacupusio. Oh, oh God, I just no. We're, we're terrible Where's tonight. Where's the fine jar? I'm right? editing all of these. Who's all coffee these cup here? Does that count? I've, I will, the world will never know that I mentioned Danny Flores. <laughs> then they can never know that I butchered poor Busio's name. Yes, all, I will, I'm cutting all Jean of this. Jean-Luca Busio. We all got a freebie there. <laughs> So 1.2 million looks to be the reported transfer fee. It looks like his value is just at a million dollars transfer market and foot mob and all of that are reporting just under a million. And it probably just went up by a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Playing in the prestigious MLS, you know, boosts your profile. Hey, it happens, especially in the prestigious Midwest. Whenever soccer capital, whenever we make the playoffs in a uh, MLS cup run, then he'll. Then that's where the money will come from. What was uh, that Busio guy's transfer fee? Damn, that's a good question. Um, it was well north of that, wasn't it? Oh yeah, no, yeah. it was like 
five, six, seven. Okay. Line. We'll see. There you go. Prestigious Midwest MLS. There you go. Man, you expect me to have a memory <laughs> between 5.1 million and 8.5 million euro. Oh, sorry. No, that's his current transfer value. Ah, uh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. Stats. But I think that is in the ballpark. So. Okay. Six million. Six yeah. million euro. Well done. You got it. Ta-da. I don't remember exact numbers, man. That's that's what Google is for. Okay. So, again, he is not with the team yet. No. All the red tape, et cetera, et cetera, will be a couple weeks. And he, he is he is in form, though. It's it's in he, season. He should. He played the first three games with them. And uh, some other good news is that he gets to practice with that team. They have worked that out, that he'll oh, still nice. practice with them. He can't play with them but he'll still practice with him. So he'll be staying in shape, you know, I mean, not That's quite in shape, but yeah. I don't know that I've ever heard that before. It's, I have seen that before, but it's been rare. I mean, I've seen te- like a, uh, somebody who maybe would go to a different team or a lower level team to train for a little while to stay in shape, but it, uh, it isn't common, but it has happened, and that's a that's a good thing. Probably part of the whole friendship built by Brian Bliss going down and working the deal out. Okay, are we missing anything on the new guy? I think we've we can't just sit here and pretend like we us three know all about the Colombian league. So no, that's the fun of MLS signings. It's always just you can pick apart some YouTube videos. Look at his FIFA rating, <laughs> but his uh, uh, football manager rating, his FIFA rating, the little highlight reel set to really bad music, which it usually is. Uh, either some rap that you can't let you know the family hear, or hopefully some one day, pop. hopefully one day when MLS reaches new heights, we'll look fondly back on those days where you never knew any of the signings and ah, uh, good times. Every signing was a potential world beater right at that point now it's like oh that guy played in usl okay oh come on when digital takawira was signed did everybody think <laughs> wow this guy's gonna be a star or we just fed that narrative <laughs> nobody come even on. know exactly. anybody in exactly. the first year but you know i gotta admit every time that there's a rumor of a player it's like oh you know it's like Oh, I might be getting a gift. It I watched. Present. I watched ten minutes of that opening game before I realized Digital Takawira was a star. Okay, ten took, minutes took took little Cody about ten minutes to realize he was a star. How old were you? Oh, forget it. I don't want to know. This was ninety six. Depending on the, I, so I would have been six or seven. Okay. When's your birthday? Rocking the bull cut, July. You would have been six. I can do the math, but he doesn't remember exact numbers. Okay. No. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. It was 96. I don't remember when the league started that year. Everything's changed. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it sense. started before June. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fair bet right there. <laughs> April? I don't know. And I you was there. had to nitpick me there, didn't I think it was April. <laughs> I was there. I mean, well, you remember where you were saying? I, was there. I, I know. Was I know exactly what seat I was in. I have like the screen, like gifts in my head of, of the ball off the crossbar and the, and the digital crawl. But uh, yeah, I hated that. I was in the lower bowl. Do they have the op- op- yes. upper bowl open? Yep. That's yeah, where my seat I was in. late and I had to sit up there. I was surprised by the line. Look at this. That was there. Look at this, listeners. You got a pod of true 96ers here. Hey, I, w- I was coaching games that day and we're like, okay, got to get out of here. Got to get to the Wizards game. My, my season ticket was Wizards row game, one, yeah, seat Wiz. one and two in section 201, club level. I actually had dinner in the club Ooh. before the game. It was mediocre. You were even a stud then, huh? Uh, <laughs> way more of a stud then than I am now. You know, one thing we, I don't know that we've ever actually talked about, and I've never seen anyone on Twitter mention it is. So the name changed from the Wiz, and it was about, you know, the a furniture guy in New York city that had that as a slogan that it's this guy from Seinfeld. There was a Seinfeld episode that I'm the Wiz. Yes, I'm the Wiz. There's an entire <laughs> Seinfeld episode. I'm sure it's not the actual guy or the actual slogan, but it's like, that is clearly who he was talking about. There was a whole Seinfeld reference to this guy, and I never hear anyone mention that until now. I think it was. I think their saying was, first. "He can't beat the Wiz" or something like that. That was the. One of He's the Wiz, and he can't beat him. One of Elaine's infamous boyfriends. Yes. yes. <laughs> and she fell in love with him because he had the dreamy TV eyes, and she didn't know why she had fallen for him. <laughs> oh, Seinfeld. That's he was hypnotic. Okay, so this weekend, Colorado Rapids. 
Did you want to say something else there, Thad? No. Looking no. at me inquisitively. I was waiting for the moment. Go ahead. Okay. Colorado Rapids. I don't know what moment you were waiting for there. I know. I'm waiting for the moment. Don't worry. Don't okay. Worry. He's, he's, he's just, he's all excited. It looks like there's something on his face. Robert, why don't you tell us? You watched the previous game, right? Where they got shellacked four to nothing. Well, by Cody, the I did. And you know what annoyed me the most? Is that little flea, Michael Barrios, was on the field. Dude, he is a, he's, he's a pest. They have two of the most infamous pests in my head. Okay, and the other one? Diego Rubio, who they will be without, thankfully. Oh, so sad. That's my understanding. He's still injured. Who are some other pests in MLS? Give me your top five pests. Well, Beckerman's gone. but Yeah, know. there's that's a very good one. Yes. Dom Dwyer. Diego Chara. <laughs> Dwyer is a pest, yeah. I was touched that you were so heartbroken that Chara got injured in the, in the game against Sporting. I was touched by that. <laughs> I was accused of making fun of it. <laughs> and were you? No, no. I would never do that. Even to Diego Chara. <laughs> what about the former? Or that was Jimmy Chara, wasn't it? What about the former sounder being a little pest? Who's he with now? Atlanta? Who, who, who is this? I can't think of his name, so oh, I'm looking no. at that. Thad, remember his name for me. A former pest for Seattle. Give me more than that. Ozzy. Nope. Anyway. Cisneros. <laughs> no. That's a name, though, right? Who's Ozzy Cisneros? Did you just make that up? No, he plays for Sporting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's so many. We, we were just talking about Juan. I'm, we're gonna gonna, I'm all messed up. <laughs> we're going to do a pod on the entire roster with Cody. I'm just going to, like, <laughs> throw out names and see if he remembers who they are. Did, does he play with Sporting? Uh, Did he play with Sporting five years ago? That's why Juan Cisneros sounds so familiar to me when he joined. Huh? <laughs> it was Ozzy Cisneros. Ozzy Alonso is who I'm thinking yes. of. Alonso. There we go. See, I told you I get it. <laughs> oh, man. So if you do go <laughs> subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast, don't use this one <laughs> as, <laughs> as an example. It's midweek. We're not on top of our game, okay? I'm sorry about okay. that. All yeah. right, Colorado Rapids. They got stung by the Sounders. Four zip. And I tell you what, guys, watching this game was like watching children on a playground chasing a dog. Yikes. The Rapids could not keep up with the Sounders movement, and they had no chance whatsoever in this game at any point. Uh, I think they had two shots on goal. The Rapids did. Uh, Sounders had nine. However, and this is a little disheartening, guys. Ready? Colorado's expected goals was better than Sporting's mm. in this game, sadly. <laughs> What was it? Uh, 1.4, and I think we were a 1.1. So, yeah. Their expected goals was 1.4, and they had two shots. Uh-huh. Yeah. How was that possible? Yeah, I don't know, but that's what the were stats they both PKs? say. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I'm just reading off of yeah. MLSsoccer.com on that. But, uh, yeah, the Rapids trust them. had no answer to the Sounders attack. Uh, Rapids play a 4-3-3 just like we do. Uh, they had nothing in the attack. They were not impressive at all, which, of course, means they're going to kick our ass come Saturday night, right? <laughs> is that what that means? <laughs> I see, no, I see I you're leaning a, into the what the rest of Sporting Kansas City no, Nation no, no. is doing here. Just everyone it seems like we're just grief eaters. Everyone just wants to not be happy about something. Nah, I think Sporting's going to be fine. Uh, Cabral, their new signing, the winger from the Galaxy, uh, played all of like 20 minutes. So, you know, he may get the start come this weekend. But uh, I don't see him making a significant difference either, so. Okay, what about Sporting KC? A lot of the reason for people not being happy about the team right now was some of the lineup decisions. Do we see Ben Sweat again? Because Logan and Denbe is still working his way back. He is still working his way back. And just for the people who have conspiracy theories that he's in Europe on trial or being sold or something like that, I saw him run Ooh, by me today. That's a thing? I didn't. I have not heard this. I haven't heard it as much recently, but I did have heard it in the not too distant past. Uh, I saw him run by me today, so he that was good. Okay, so why isn't Denby the go-to and it's not Leibold? Why we see Leibold instead? His calves, stronger calves. <laughs> uh, they paid more for Leibold. So I, I would probably say 50-50 between Leibold and Sweat and leaning, I'll, I'll say 51 Sweat, 49 Leibold. How about that? Okay. And... I think you probably will not see Nemanja 
Am I close? Rodoya. That's pretty good. Nemanja um, Rodoya. I don't think we'll see him start either, but might see him in the game day roster. Did see Alan Polito out there in full training. Okay. Uh, not wearing a little red don't hit me vest or anything like that. Okay. So, honestly, I'll be honest, I didn't see him do a whole lot in the training that we saw today. But, I mean, it was in full training during their scrimmage. Uh, so, I'm, like, compete for a ball with, you know, defenders and stuff Maybe like that. Maybe a cameo so, then? Could be. I, I kind of doubt. I, I think doubt it'll it. be a little bit longer okay. just to let him work into a little bit more shape. But I, I wouldn't. I also wouldn't be totally surprised if he was on the on the bench as just a uh, potential. I was told that uh, they took like him and Nemanja. I uh, can't remember. I think there was somebody else that they took with them to Portland just to get them kind of in that game day vibe. So they're kind of right. getting into that routine of the travel and all that type of stuff. Smart. So that would uh, at least mean they're getting closer. And Gotti Kenda saw him run by me today too. That's what the one I was waiting for. Yeah. So that's a positive. Uh, not not close to. I want to say not close. Not close as in like the next week or so being in the the full training. But Peter said that there's four phases of training, and he has been in two of them. Like, so. What are he, these four phases? I don't know, man. I'm assuming like warm up. Uh, Is this like industry standard or something Peter Vermees has made in his head? Everything that Peter has made up in his head is industry standard at <laughs> this point, man. That's true. <laughs> like, that's so true. <laughs> uh, I've, I've seen like where, you know, eight years ago, these are the club mantra and, you know, our, our values. And all of a sudden I see like other clubs have the exact same ones pop up. So yeah, but. we need a we need a Vermees hater on this show to echo what what appears to be the majority of Sporting Kansas City. Fans. Well, that's got to be someone who doesn't. Asking questions post games right. or any other time. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, and he was in a pretty good mood today, so that was that's a good thing. Okay, so we're expecting the same lineup across the back line. You think? I would say Susie so. back out there. Yeah, I you mean, give give the nod to Volader again. Tell him the mistake was okay, and he recovered well. There was a lot more than one mistake. Well, there was yeah. one big mistake. Yeah, he he played. He played, played right after, after Robert's not so sure about that. Read my article on the bluetestament.com for further information. I was, I was <laughs> setting you up to talk about that. Good man, Cody. Good man. It was an assist. <laughs> Cody gets he the just assist took a, for He just every took view. a very proud drink of his, of his water there. Is that what that was? <laughs> so what, you, you're, uh, you're not on board with Volater? Not as a right back because he's just too left foot dependent and that had a Big impact on his play, and I think Sporting's play in some sense too. So maybe a left back, but you know, you mean left center back? Left center back is what I mean. Yes, thank you. Uh, but right center back or the right back? <laughs> let's just throw that out there. Uh, Did he the do that last him. year? No, no, he didn't play right back once. No, no, but he did sweat play. did. And uh, Robbie did play left back in uh, spring training, I believe. Oh, maybe that's did what he? I'm okay. thinking of. Okay, what about the midfield? More Roger? I know we talked about um, maybe Felipe gets the nod on this one. Yeah, I'll, I will still probably lean towards um, the same starting lineup for the, the midfield with uh, having the five days, I guess, between games. I, yeah, I, I mean, if you're going to do that, though, if you're going to do any sub, it would probably be Felipe at this point. Because I still don't think Nemanja will start. So if if we see him, it'd probably be a later game thing or something. So no subs. That means it's that means it's Kyrie again. Could be. Could be Johnny's. Yeah, that's my. I think that's the the one I would want to. Definitely see. not Johnny. Right? He's, Is it Johnny's on the right though? Because if you notice late in the match, Johnny's ended up on the left and Shallowy yeah. was on the right. Yeah, which I no. thought was and a little it, bit weird. Well, they, I don't know. Shallowy's always switching. That's they yeah. they switch a lot. They do in game. Um, it it seems like it was a fair long amount of time though. Once Janice right. came in, is yeah. Janice is right footed, yes. left footed, right footed. So then, yeah, he just he must enjoy being the cut in factor, the cut in side man. Right. Yeah. I mean, again, he he he's going to create chaos whichever place he's at. But he, I definitely want to see him as one of those wingers right now. So something I just wanted to throw out there. 
I don't know if you guys see this or not, but on the left-hand side of our attack, which we're mostly attacking on the left side, you know, if you look at percentages, you've got Fontas, Sweat, Tommy, Shallowy, and of course at times Agata drifting into that space. That's five guys all on that left-hand space in the attacking end. Do you guys notice how sometimes it's just too packed yes. in there? Yes, I agree. Whereas the right side, Roger, I'm sorry, Graham stays kind of back and picks his spots that he hits, you know, at the right time. Maybe when Shelton has the ball or Roger or the center forward lays it off to him. So I don't know. I'd like to see that left side kind of work that out a little bit better. That's probably one of my biggest complaints about Tommy is that he's playing a, an eight, 10 role and ends up way out on the left line so often. Mm -hmm. You know, I've actually. Like, I, I've seen that as well, and I've thought that it was almost more part of the game plan. Like, the team loves the switch so much, the crossing it over to the other side, that they they lure them in over to the left right. so often, yeah. and then it just opens up the other side to go down and, the and right wing. I mean, that would have made perfect sense last game. They drift way to the left, draw everybody over to leave Shelton open for a shot. <laughs> I thought he was. I thought he was on to something there, and it was just a joke. <laughs> he, he looked. It looked like he was on a roll. <laughs> I was, man. You, you fell right for it. Right? Well done. Well done. No, and again, I'll do love to Kyrie. He's not our biggest goal, goal scoring threat. So, and if put if I'm nicely. recalling right, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, guys, I'm sure you will. Most of our shots, I believe, that we got on goal actually came from the right side. Like Tommy's two shots, he was actually in the right side of the box. Uh, Kyrie had that one shot. Shallowy's actual shot was probably more like in the middle, but I don't remember any shots coming from the left side. Some of those you just mentioned, though, or didn't feel like the result of like a coordinated attack. Like Tommy just kind of had just talking the ball about, there. The yeah, right, right. I'm just talking about on the left side shots. I don't remember shots yeah. much coming from the left side. There well, might have been a couple. There was more missing, room but. to penetrate because there was so many people on the left. Right. So exactly. Tommy was able to dribble in with that shot. Or, what did you guys think of Shallowy last match? Yeah, I thought it looked looked maybe like he was still in preseason form. Maybe wasn't all the way at a hundred percent yet. A little steps slower than he has been. Maybe he's he's. I think he's working his way in. Could be. Could be. The uh, got to remember, Sporting really didn't score a ton of goals in preseason this year. Yeah. That's not always directly. I mean, when they did, it was against what college team. So, but um, they didn't really score a lot against. MLS competition or even the good USL competition. So that's a little bit of a concern, but I really felt Willie was uh, kind of a non-factor too. They, yeah, that was, they got to figure out how to get him, how to get him going. I mean, he had a couple of chances, but most of it was like, here's the ball and he didn't get a good touch or it was a bad ball to him. I mean, I know we talked about this last time. But. I think shallow, you know, it sometimes tries a little more than he should. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that might have been part of the factor on that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, like he has that attitude sometimes. Hey, I've really got to make a difference here. And he tries to, you know, he doesn't play within himself sometimes. I felt like we're an old married couple there. I was finishing your, your sentences. <laughs> an old pod couple. Mm. Cody has given us a scant views at this point. No, I was, I was, it was cute. I was looking at you from across the table. It was, it was cute. <laughs> oh, Lord. Look at our show. With, I'm with all farther the this way. Six years of rapport. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sporting Kansas City, Colorado Rapids, Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Be there? No. Dick Sporting Goods Park. Go yeah, he's on the call, right? Yes. Yeah, we didn't We didn't mention that. Who is calling this game, Thad Bell? Our old friend, Nate Bucati, and our even older, older friend, Tony Miola. I saw... Well, Robert is giving a thumbs down, but I saw didn't some people. No, 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 no. Enjoy? I want to be. If you're going to say that, I've got to be specific. Yeah, I'm I not call the biggest out. Tony Mignola play-by-play -play or color announcer fan. Yeah, I was. I was thinking I saw a couple tweets that they were a good pairing. I didn't hear them last week, but did, is that what you're referencing? No, or just Tony one? in the past. I'm just not a big fan. I mean, I like the guy. He's a nice guy, but I'm just yeah. not a big fan of the way he does it, and that's okay. I've like listening to him on Sirius Satellite Radio, but that was that's a. A show, not a calling a game, right? Yeah, that's just my opinion. Just saying, I didn't want you know Nate on my back. Thanks, Cody. Really walked that one. That back was nothing there. to do with with Nate. <laughs> Go sport, Nate. Woo.
neighbor has just been sent off Some part of strong and all comes off My fun fun things got me drinking My fun fun things got me drinking My fun fun things got me drinking Give me beer or whiskey, one or gin Anything to shake this foot I'm in My fun fun things got me drinking My fun fun things Yeah.